so we now have a panel of the community leaders here. So we got uh, tech lady and woman who call girls in tech and the young women. I know sometimes this name confuses people with coding girls as well. So yeah, let's go with what you do, who are you, what the organization, what the program is. So. So hello, my name is Elisha, and I'm the founder of Tech Ladies. So Tech Ladies is a community for women to connect, grow, and learn as uh, programmers in the tech industry. So um, we, we do run a bunch of programs like study groups, uh, workshops. I, I guess like one of the most famous program that we do is this uh, Tech Ladies Bootcamp. It's a 12-week 12, 12 part-time bootcamp where we take women or with a near-zero technical background and uh, put them through a bootcamp to eventually become programmers. So since launch last year, we have trained about 23 women and seven of them actually got internship or uh, are junior software engineers now. Really, really proud of these ladies. So, uh, so for Tech Ladies, that's my passion project. During the day, I work at Facebook as the developer programs regional lead for Asia Pacific. Hi, okay, people can hear me. Um, I'm Purunima Kamit. Um, I'm a director for Women Who Code in Singapore. Uh, Women Who Code is a global nonprofit, um, and we launched in Singapore in January this year. Um, our aim is to inspire more women in tech careers, um, and in order to do that, we also host um, events, uh, tech-related events for a women-only audience, uh, speaker sessions, coding sessions, uh, workshops, and, and as such. Um, so, I mean, our, our main belief is to actually build a strong network, um, which which um, helps learn and develop no, new skill sets um, in order to um, realize opportunities. Um, you know, tech. Uh, career-related opportunities in Singapore. Um, and my motivation, um, we always talk about la a lack of women um, in senior management on, on boards as founders. Um, so I think uh, we could start by um, learning new things, creating new things, and, and that's how we fix um, the pipeline. Hi, everyone. I'm Wan Ting. I lead the Singapore chapter for Girls in Tech. So Girls in Tech is actually a global organization. We are 10 years old now. We have over 60 chapters around the world. And the mission of Girls in Tech is to empower, engage, and educate um, girls and women who are passionate in technology to have a voice in the industry. And here in Singapore, our uh, mandate is we have three main chapters, uh, three main pillars that we are focusing on. The first part is definitely on pipeline. Um, we see that there is a pipeline issue that needs to be addressed. How do we encourage more girls to step into STEM industries and not be afraid because now um, it's more male dominated but it should change in the near future. And the second part is on building up confidence and leadership skills in girls and letting them take up leadership positions like what just mentioned. Yeah, so that's the second part. And the third part is really on skills and um, technical skill sets like uh, teaching them on coding skills and um, having um, design thinking book camps and things like that. So, yeah. Uh, I'm Minnie, and I work for UN Women, which is the United Nations Entity for Gender Equality. And we work on a lot of issues around ending violence against women, economic empowerment, women in leadership. But one of the cool things that we launched um, four years ago is an initiative called Girls to Pioneers, which uh, works on exactly that, the pipeline, uh, creating the next generation pipeline of uh, female workforce in STEM. So we work with young students on getting them to understand STEM, um, giving them access to STEM opportunities, uh, just giving them an overview of what it looks like to work in. And all the amazing women on the panels before this are role models for them. Um, we also work with parents and teachers on um, integrating STEM into early learning, especially for young girls, and on, with employers on hiring and retention of female STEM talent. Oh, cool. So I have a follow-up question for me. You are coming from UN Women, so uh, what f you have been working since 2010, so it's been like seven years. So during all your career, what is the biggest achievement through your career? Uh, that's a difficult question for me. I'm a bit of a glasses half empty person so I'm going to say because we haven't achieved gender equality we haven't achieved anything <laughs> but, um, 
for me, I think Girls to Pioneers has been that success because when we first started it, I wasn't sure how it would go or whether we would have any progress in inspiring young girls. But in a very short time, 17,000 girls have now um, just indicated that they're interested in understanding more about STEM. They've been a part of our programs. They're going um, forward and doing this. And the first lot of them have just gone in art or, or are just going to university this year. So we're going to see how many of them are actually pursuing STEM careers. So um, I'll get back to you after I check that. <laughs> Cool, cool. So, uh, um, we are all with female folks group, and through all the the program, we are trying to running, trying to uh, promoting women to put them into tech fields. So, what do you think is the most e effective way to um, to increase the gender ratio in tech fields? Yeah, like, well, what's your ideas? <laughs> Probably I can go. Uh, so to me, I think it's a lot on community building and also about um, celebrating female role models. So um, to encourage, in any situation, it's really difficult to be a minority and you feel like you're alone. That's why um, Girls in Tech and I'm sure like the other community leaders would, would feel the same, that to have a strong community of support and say that everyone is here for you and don't be afraid. We have, there are people who have been there and done that. And you know you you can just go ahead and just do it. And um, I also think that network plays a big role. I mean, um, right now I feel uh, we also have um, we don't have many women role models. Like you said, we, it's it's our responsibility to build that as well for our future generations. Um, and and um, you know also doing more, creating more, um, and then learning, keep keep challenging yourself. Um, I think that's um, yeah, raising your hand whenever there's an opportunity available. It, it helps. So, like, how I see it is really to see everything in in um, on a big picture, right? Like, how, what are the? Um, I see us working together, not not necessarily collab collaborating, but rather ne let's not duplicate each other's work. So, if if you're targeting girls, I don't need to do girls. I can focus on women. If you're running workshops, I don't need to do more workshops. I can focus on boot camp. So, in so in the grand scheme of things, you can see that we are very clearly serving um, girls and women, females in general, in a in a very nice, a very neat sort of like collaborative, cohesive kind of a structure. So that's how I see how we can help in in um, getting more women or girls interested participating in the tech industry. Uh, I want to take a step back, actually, and start with mindset change at a, at a younger age, um, but also for the community that influences these young girls, because we interact with a lot of teachers who tell us, but girls just don't get it. Like, why do you even bother? Girls don't get it. Or um, why do you want to inspire our girls to go into tech and engineering? Because engineers are so androgynous, and we want our girls to be ladies. And these are female teachers who head science for some of the most prestigious schools. And so for us, we want to take a step back and change that mindset because that is already going to limit girls at a very young age from accessing these careers. Yeah, even for myself, I studied in seventh year, but uh, during my study, I, I didn't code. So I just assumed, OK, coding is not my thing. But after, I self learned, OK. It's not so difficult as I imagine. So I think the perception need to change. Definitely, it's it's very very big problem. Yeah. So uh, I have a, another question. So as organizer, do you have any time that you are frustrated with what we are doing? Because like the problem we are trying to solve is so huge, and how do you have any time to think? Oh, this is cannot work, and what what the first frustration it is. Just share with the organizers and see how we can help. <laughs> so, I can, so I can go first. Um, confession: I didn't think that the bootcamp will work. The model of the Tech Ladies Bootcamp will work. So, so the the model is uh, we take senior engineers to train women how to code, and these women learn how to code by creating products for non-profits. So there's three different distinct groups of people, um, which, yeah. Like, how can it work, right? Like, it sounds like a very difficult task. Um, so my, my train of thoughts was that, you know, just, just try that. Like, you know, what, what's the worst thing that can happen, right? If you fail, then let's pretend it never happened. I'm just going to move on with my life. So, <laughs> so it, it really isn't, 
it doesn't have to be that difficult to start. So, so if you have an idea, you have a passion, just, just start. And the worst thing you can do is that it fails, then you can pretend it never happened, move on with your life. Okay? So in, in terms of like continuing doing stuff like this, of course it's, cha it's definitely challenging. Just, just look at the scale of today's event. I think you've done an amazing job. I think you should give them a, let's give her a round of applause. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. so, so as the event organizer, um, it's definitely a lot of things to do, a lot of things that you need, little things that you need to take care of, and it's even more difficult when you have a full-time job because I think that's a question for that, so I'll talk more about it later. So again, it, it boils back to why are you doing this? Uh, what's your passion? And that passion, um, that passion led me to start something, and the results of my work motivates me to continue doing it. Um, so, so that's how it, it works for me. Sure. Uh, thank you. Um, so I think, I mean, we've been um, just six months old in Singapore, so I, I won't label it as a frustration yet. Um, um, so, I mean, when we host events, I mean, there's a lot of planning that goes in, I mean, you, as you would have done for this one. Um, and it's, it's a really, really about participation. I mean, we expect around like 70 people and in this 25 turn up <laughs> and then um, so I think we really need more participation from audience because we are willing to go um, a step ahead and do more and it's just would be great to see more people come so I think these two problems are really very real problems so one it's on participation and one is on getting volunteers and like help to do things right so participation it's for example, we just had a mother-daughter coding workshop. I think it's an excellent initiative, you know, to try and change mindsets on like mom. They should learn how to code and bring their daughter alone to learn that. But initially, the reaction was really, really slow. So the frustration is more like disappointment and also why is it that people are not getting this? Like, how do we reach out to more people so that they can feel this, that they need to do something about this? And yeah, with passion, it actually really turned out really well. We had a full house event on that day, and, and really it's just pushing through and doing whatever you can to spread the word and getting everyone who is passionate about it to do the same, and that's how it eventually got. Yeah. Uh, I think for me, my frustration goes back to the mindset change things when we meet people who say, no, girls can't do this, or they're just not, it's not possible, it's not in their makeup, it's, it's just not in their genes and like who decides that? that that's really very <laughs> frustrating but um, at the same time I mean it's the same thing the first year we ran it there was this teacher who told me well you know my principal wants you to do this so I'm going to let you do it with our students but I can tell you there's going to be no impact and now four years down the line um, she's still calling us back every year saying you know, your program does so much for our girls and we're so excited. And the first year we had 100 students participating. This year we have 1,000 students from the school participating in the program. So, yeah, I guess uh, it's just how you can turn that um, experience to something positive. Even for myself, so most of the time our events are free. So when you post a free events, people just crazy to sign up, but they, uh, in the end they never show up, which as organizer, I have to say it's kind of disappointing because uh, our speaker is my guest and I help this full crowd in the, in, the, in the house and our speaker can sharing their knowledge and have more impact to the bigger group. So what keep myself motivated is when the events end, maybe one or two audience come to you and say, wow, and I love this event. So that's how I keep myself motivated. And I think maybe still, because the problem we're trying to save is already there like 20 years, 13 years, so we have to be patient about it. So um, what we want, although there's some disappointment, frustration, but it's better than not doing it. If we don't do it, who else will be? So eventually I think we still can change the world. <laughs> I think like, there's a lot of organization notes that we can share, like um, for, for getting people to show up, what I do is usually a week in or a day before the event, I beg people to cancel their tickets. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'll, be, I'll send an email saying, please, please, please cancel your ticket if you're not coming, so I can have a better gauge of who's coming. Um, what I've, I've also have an email list, so that 
that work because response from that is higher than um, people randomly seeing the Facebook post or whatnot. And I also use Facebook ads. That's very good for outreach. So, yeah. Mm. So, yeah, for Elisha and the Panina, you both have your full time job and how you balance your full time job and your community activities. It, it used to be overwhelming to begin with, to be very honest with you, because um, the network-related stuff is always so exciting than your boring day job, right? So, uh, but then you learn to prioritize. Um, then you also have um, a good support system at home, and um, you try to um, convince your manager uh, that you, don't, you cannot attend the late-night meetings. But yeah, you, you do make it work because um, it, it is a purpose and a movement that you truly believe in and um, you really want to work towards. So um, yeah, I guess you make it happen. So like how I balance my full-time job and my passion project, um, the answer is badly. So um, it sounds very sad, but it sounds very depressing, but it's pretty rewarding. So um, I'll stay about one or two hours after work every day just to work on tech ladies, and I eat almost three meals at my desk. So this, I'm just trying to find like, pockets of time where I can work on tech ladies. And I, I know that this is not sustainable. So right now, my focus is to create like an onboarding doc so that, so that volunteers can, can take um, over it. Um, I know it sounds very depressing, but at the same time, right, when you look at the results that, that come out from your work, it's very rewarding. Um, and I do think that there's also, it helps. It, I, I didn't do it for my career, but what I realized is that doing tech ladies actually helped with my career um, because so my, in my current role, my, the manager who hired me wanted to hire me because like, whatever I'm doing for tech ladies is the skill set that I'm doing now for Facebook. So that's something that uh, it, it works, right? So, so, so I guess like, what I'm trying to tell you is that the journey is going to suck, but the rewards are going to be awesome. I must say tech ladies is doing a really good job. I join, I'm in their group and the effort that you take to welcome all your members and to share their stories every time and to you know, share success stories, I think it's, it's really a great job. Maybe we should have another workshop for the organizer, how to market your organization. And then Elisha can be the coach for this. <laughs> yeah, so um, another question is like, um, as Elisha just said, okay, Actually, we, are, we have the same focus, but actually the program we run is kind of like differentiate from each other. So how we can work together, what, what, how we can you know, make the huge impact by working together? Um, actually, uh, before, before the working together, but this is one particular bit that we do within Women Who Code. Um, it's, it's this program called as Applaud Her. Um, so, uh, what, what Applaud Her basically does is, so we have um, networks in 67 cities across the world, and um, each network has its own, like they have directors and they have network leads. And so we have an opportunity to applaud um, about our network members. So let's say if somebody is, um, has, has got a new job, has completed a new project, has contributed to open source. Or, so um, we s can submit um, Applaud Her submissions, and um, basically the whole network raves about them. We go onto Facebook, we go onto Twitter, um, we go on LinkedIn and just talking about, start talking about that individual. So we essentially make that person famous for like a month. So um, I think uh, one of the ways that we can all work together is actually encourage and, and applaud more women um, with, within um, Singapore. Um, I think that will actually also serve as a good, um, yeah, it, it does encourage when some people could talk good about you, right? So I think I would like to work to uh, get that across the board. On how we, we can work together, yeah? So I'm thinking, um, I had been in talks with another female founders network with about um, they are trying to run a hackathon in school and we were thinking of how we can work together with that and I think some of the things that came out is like uh, sharing contacts. Like I have some contacts with schools and they ha are having troubles reaching out to schools and getting buy-in from principals. And I think that's where we can help. They have a very strong um, bootcamp that they want to put in place. 
just lacking the context. And I think that's where we can always come together and say we can share resources and can share things like that to work together. I think ultimately we're all working towards the same goal, right? So it's just about pooling our resources, coming together, figuring out our individual strengths, and then leveraging it to make sure that everybody's impact is sort of amplified, that's all. Yeah. I just want to add on to that. It's like my, my audacious goal is to, uh, I think what would be nice if we can sit down and plan like our yearly schedule together so that for the community, there's always something every, every month rather than like all of our events happening in one month, we get a strong momentum and it's not sustained. I think that's not good for um, the community that we're trying to serve here. But having said that, I say it's audacious because like, at least for me, like, when I plan my event out for the year, I plan it around my work schedule so that you know, I can be there. So I'm wondering like, how, how well we can actually put together our different schedules. But well, I think that would be Girls great. Girls to Panias is my work schedule, so I, okay. can, <laughs> you know, I can fill <laughs> the, <laughs> the gaps. Yeah. Cool, cool. Due to time constriction, one last question. So if there's one thing you hope the audience can do for your initiatives, why it will be? Um, Girls to Panias needs volunteers, so if you want to come and volunteer, we run camps through the year, um, and like I mentioned, we have one coming up for 1,000 kids, and there's a grand total of two staff who work on this, so we can't run that many camps. We desperately need volunteers. Please come. Uh, there's so many amazing women here, and you know, mentors and role models play such an important part in changing mindsets and in helping um, the youth understand what is out there for them. So. Um, please do, if you have the time, if you have the interest, please do um, contact us. And uh, I guess that's, that's, a, that's a major start for us. I think for us, um, I would really appreciate if you could reach out and share with us your voice. We need help. We need to know how we can help you as well. So if you have something you can let us uh, can help us with and something that we can help you back in return, I think it will it will. Um, keep the momentum going and that's how it strengthens the community. Yeah, uh, definitely. I mean, spread the word. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, spread the word, create more and um, applaud more. Thank you. So yeah, I think it's a pretty similar, I guess, like for me is to participate. Participate as in contribute your skills, participate as in join the events and whatnot because we're here to, we are here to help you. Um, or, or like if, if we realize that everyone has been helped, then we can, I can retire a little bit. <laughs> cool. So yeah, I think what we're doing is really leads the communities to working together. So I hope the audience here can nature come to us and offer your help. And we, we also can help you back. OK, thanks. Thank you so much, uh, Pernima, Wanting, uh, Anne, Marlini, and Alicia for also inspiring us. Some of you, it's your full-time job. Some of you do it on the side out of passion uh, to make a difference. And now it's great to know we have so many different support groups that we can go to and get different kinds of resources and different kinds of support if we are ever interested in venturing into the entrepreneurship or technical field.